largely you guys kept the offensive line intact uh, throughout the course of this offseason. What's what's it like to be able to continue to build upon the, the, the strength of the this team right now with the offensive line, the running game, heading into this uh, mandatory minicamp? Uh, it feels good. Uh, of course, you know, we don't want to use, you know, our, our, our chemistry and, and uh, our success as a crutch. Um, what we're trying to do is just continue to focus on the fundamentals, the little details, uh, trying to make those better so that we can, you know, together be a great unit. Cool. Hey, Roger. Um, wondering what your sense of Taylor is right now. Obviously, missed the first four two years ago. Season came crashing down with the ACL last year. Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk to him. I'm not asking you to speak for him, but I imagine he's pretty eager to get out there for all 17 and kind of not be a story in terms of uh, not being out there? Uh, <clears throat> of course, you, I, I think um, that he wouldn't be here if, uh, you know, he wasn't eager to come back after all the adversity that he had to go on through, go through uh, these last couple of years. Um, you guys know Taylor, you know, Taylor's going to work hard. He's going to work his butt off to do the best that he can. He's doing everything that he can in rehab. And we leave it there. We let him, you know, come at his own pace. And when he's ready to go, we're going to be right there uh, with him. You know, just uh, great to have him in the building, being able to talk to him, get that personality day after day. And, uh, you know, he's just a pleasure to be around. So right now it's just all about, hey, you know, letting him do his thing and, and getting back to us as soon as he can. Corey Curtis. All right, Roger. Um, obviously, there was a lot of uncertainty this offseason with the salary cap changes and teams trying to get under that cap. I know you guys lost Dennis, but largely you're you're intact. And, and how important is that moving forward? Uh, uh, you know, it's great. I mean, uh, you know, I, I have a family to take care of. I have things that I, that I need to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm all about this team. And, you know, I have to be able to trust uh, the job that, that both Coach Brable and uh, G. Rob do, um, J. Rob do. So I, I have to be able to trust that, you know, uh, the greatest part about this game is that, you know, even though a lot of these players leave teams, they never truly go away. <clears throat> so we always see them. Uh, we always end up getting in touch with them and, and getting back together. So, uh, you know, the best thing to do is just to tell, you know, the guys that had to go that you love them and, uh, you know, do you ever need anything just to call you? So uh, Dennis is not truly out of the picture with all of us. Um, but, you know, I'm really liking the way this team is moving, moving forward. And uh, like I said, you just got to trust these guys to do to do their job. Tim Wyatt. Roger, what, what, when you kind of reflected back on uh, 2020, what kind of went through your mind, you know, from a personal standpoint and from a team standpoint and what's kind of, mindset for you as you head into what is this year 12 now mm -hmm. um my mindset last year was just you know trying to start fast you know I just really wanted to be able to help this team be able to win games right away uh of course with the the COVID adversity that that really threw a wrench into everything that we were doing um but you know we had to continue to push forward um I had some tough tough things going on in my personal life which was another reason why I was already already in that move forward mentality. <clears throat> and I was I was happy that I was able to come in every day with a positive attitude and, and working and trying to be a leader um, in the midst of some of the things I was dealing with. Um, this year, it's, it's more about continuing to just, you know, show that leadership role, but also just to improve, um, improve the way that my coaches want to teach me this game. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing so much better learning the terminology. I'm doing so much better spitting back the answers that they want to hear with their terminology. And I'm happy to be able to constantly fine tune my craft to the way that they teach me. Uh, so I feel like I'm coming along in a lot of different areas. And I, I uh, just want to be able to improve this year and, and help this team uh, get our goal of winning a championship. John Glennon.
Sure. Um, I wonder if you could talk about some of the other you've seen. What have your impressions been of Dylan? And, and uh, you know, have, have you talked to him? I guess he's getting some reps both in and out. Have you talked to him about, about guard at all? Uh, and then the other one, uh, Adam Kuhn, you know, the, the wrestler. I wonder if you've ever gone through any kind of a situation like that with a guy who hasn't even played college football. And what, what's that like trying to, you know, help teach a guy like that? Um, just with, you know, what Dylan does working hard, he's not saying much of anything. He's just putting his head down and going to work You know, everything's yes or no, sir, with him, which I really do like, uh, it's not enough to tell exactly what he can do right now. Uh, especially in practice when mostly what we do is the individual drills with some jog through, uh, but <clears throat> that's why it's great that this camp will be able to have some preseason games and be able to see him go against some other people. Uh, throughout the year, we're showing that he's versatile, being able to play a few different positions early on, uh, which is really good. Um, but, you know, of course, we're excited about him, but he has to constantly prove himself, which, you know, if he continues working the way that he is, he should be able to. As far as uh, the, the wrestler's concerned, what's his name? I, I haven't, <laughs> I don't know everybody's name just yet. Um, but, but um, you know, the fact that he's out here shows that, you know, he wants to be here. Uh, I see him working on drills off to the side, just constantly trying to learn. Um, he seems that he has a good attitude, um, very critical of himself, uh, which are good qualities to have as an offensive lineman. Humility is one of the biggest uh, things you need to have when you enter into the NFL. And luckily, we have a, a lot of kids that are doing that. Teresa? Roger, you've shared some videos of your off-season workouts uh, with weights. Uh, as an NFL player and a teammate of Derek's, when you see some of the videos and some of the things that he's doing uh, in this in the off-season to get ready, what are your thoughts? I mean, the one with the chain on his neck and the feet on the ball, what are your thoughts when you see these things that he's pushing himself? Um, I think that it's a, a competition almost. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, so that's what you're doing. Okay, well, I'm going to put two chains on. Uh, or, you know, it's like, hey, I see him uh, squatting uh, 450 pounds, you know, uh, doing box squats. So now I got to do a 650 box squat. You know, it's like those types of situations. Um, we used to always joke about who had the bigger biceps. And luckily, I've won every time. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the thing about it is, is that you know that Derek is always going to work hard. You know, you in turn want to work hard. I think that the just the team mentality is just that blue collar, just want to work, hit you in the face uh, type of team. So I'm starting to see that with everybody. And the fact that this year I was able to bring Nate along with me out there in, in California where we train together and seeing his growth, you know, it just makes me excited about the future. Uh, of course, you know, I can't tell the future, but, you know, the work that you put in is usually what, you, what you're going to get out when it comes to the season. Steve Lehman. Roger, I'm just curious when the Julio Jones signing was made public, if you and the other offensive linemen, you know, did like a touchdown celebration or something, because you're probably going to see if fewer nine man boxes moving forward this year. <laughs> you know, that's funny. I, I absolutely talked about that. I was like, yes. But, um, you know, honestly, I, I, I really thought that J-Rob got that for my birthday because, you know, my birthday was on June 6th. We got him on June 6th. So I really thought it was for me. So, you know, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you to everybody. Uh, for your birthday wishes along with Julio Jones. So I uh, appreciate that. <laughs> Buck? Yeah, Rob, it's just kind of good to Nate Davis. I mean, how, how big a difference have you seen in him from, from the player that got here as a, as a third round pick out of Charlotte and you know, the, the maturation process, the technique, the technique that he's been able to develop? It seems like nine days. Yeah, they, uh, they say that the biggest jump that you make in your career is from year one to year two. Um, you take away OTAs from a man, it's going to be a little bit tougher to watch how much he can improve. I think that he's um, been learning more and more, especially, uh, you know, talking to me, talking to Ben Jones. You know, we've been able to help him with, you know, seeing things and having experience. Um, and, and he did a great job from year one to year two. You know, from now on, it's like, all right, how can I get better? You have to like almost research yourself. And I think that he was looking at himself. He's been listening to Keith. He's been listening to me. Um, and now it's time for him to make his own decisions on what he can do to make Nate Davis better. And uh, when we see him play this year, um, I know he's going to do well. Like, I mean, you know that he's going to do well because he's got us. We all got each other's back. We're all been together for so long and we're always going to keep fine tuning each other. Um, 
and, and keeping each other accountable to play this game well. Last two for Roger, Jim Wyatt. And Roger, another uh, receiver team got this offseason. Josh Reynolds, you know him from your days with the with the Rams. What, what it, what, what's it like being kind of reunited with him, a guy like him, and what does he bring to the team? Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, um, the, the thing that's great about our wide receiver core is having a few guys that are, you know, 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", that are very lengthy, uh, very athletic, uh, you know, um, having Josh on the team is, is great just to see another familiar face. Um, also being able to have conversations about guys that we know back home and then uh, just his ability, his athletic, his, his, uh, his athleticism. And like I said, just his length um, is going to be true values for the team. I mean, having three guys out there, three big wide receivers out there, you know, just chances go up, um, you know, 50, 50 balls end up going to us which you love to see. And once again, it helps just open up that running game, which you know is our first love as an offensive lineman. Last question, John Glennon. Hey, Roger, uh, I'm curious um, how much, um, you know, vaccination talk there is among the, the team, the guys in general, and then maybe, you know, I don't know what your choice was, but maybe if you could just maybe talk about uh, your thought process on the, on the vaccination situation and what, you know, what kind of went through your mind as you wanted to make up your mind one way or the other. Uh, I can't speak on the entire NFL, but I know for this team, we've been trying to be as informative as possible. Um, nobody has been forced. Everybody has been given the option. Um, you know, it's all about safety for yourself, safety for your family. And they've given us choices on which vac vaccination we can choose. Uh, I mean, that's all that you can that you can look for out of your club. Uh, for me personally, you know, I'm kind of on the fence, constantly doing research. And, you know, sometimes there's so much information out there, it's hard to choose. Um, but, you know, for me, I'm kind of leaning towards doing the vaccination just so I could be a lot freer with, freer with my teammates, uh, be able to vi visit family um, and not have to deal with some of those restrictions that come along with not being vaccinated. One last quick follow, Jim. And Roger, kind of on a lighter note, you, you kind of regard as a pretty sharp dressed guy. What did you think about Taylor's uh, suit that he showed up for at the CMA uh, award? <laughs> hey, man, you know, I, you guys remember that first game suit I came out in, man. But no, he was he was sharp, man. He was sharp. And, and you know, uh, I'm always going to support my teammates because, you know, I feel like I got some of the best teammates in the world, man. So uh, decided for him. And I'm excited to see what these guys can put together because I know some people struggled on their first year. I won't name no names, Nate Davis, but that's okay. All right, we're going to keep working on that. We're going to keep getting better. <laughs>